Have you ever seen cool looking wall art on Etsy or Wayfair and wanted to grab your wallet and click buy immediately? Maybe you saw an inspiring quote for your office or cute nursery rhymes for a baby's room. The cool thing is you can create your own custom word wall art using Canva, a free graphic design tool. It's amazingly simple and so fun to make. This is Jackie with Plan a Healthy Life and I share videos about digital planning and how to create a healthy and happy life. Inspirational wall art can definitely give you happy vibes, especially when you create it yourself. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to find inspiration for your printable wall art, how to choose the size of your print, how to add text, how to change the font and the spacing, how to add shadows, how to add a colorful highlight. I'm going to give you some other design ideas and I'm going to show you how to print your wall art. So let's get started. Step one in designing your printable wall art is to choose a short quote or saying for your project. You can Google inspirational quotes or funny quotes for women or kitchen quotes. Use whatever search term will help you find the type of quote you're looking for. Or go to Pinterest and browse wall art quotes or sarcastic fitness quotes. You may even have a family saying that could be made into wall art or an adorable quote from your kids. If it was me when I was a little kid, my wall art would say, what if? <laughs> While looking at quotes, you'll also find inspiration for the layout or font types to use in your printable wall art project. If you are designing a print to sell on Etsy or in an online shop, obviously you don't want to copy someone else's design. For your own personal use though, you can be more, quote, strongly inspired by what you see on the web. And once you've chosen a quote, it's time to log into Canva or sign up for a free account. Canva is a free graphic design platform that's great for making invitations, social media graphics, Christmas cards, and much more. Canva has thousands of templates you can customize using its drag and drop interface, or you can design something completely unique like we'll do in this example. I use Canva almost every day, so I have a pro account, but you can easily sign up for a free account. So if you've never used Canva before, sign up for a free account, Otherwise, log into your account and let's get creating. Next, choose a size for your print. In this example, I'm going to create an 8x10 canvas size so my word art can be easily printed on a home printer. If you want a specific frame size or want to create a metal or canvas print, research the size you need and then use that size for your dimensions in Canva. For example, CVS Photo, which I use often, has canvas prints in 5x7, 8x10, 11x14, 12x18, and even other sizes. They also often have 40% off coupon codes, which is really nice. We will talk more about printing your design later in this video. So back to our design, you're logged into Canva and now we're ready to start creating. So I'm going to click on create a design in the upper right hand corner. As I scroll through, you're going to see that Canva has lots of different sizes that you can choose with one click, like letter that is eight and a half by 11 inches, poster, which is eight by 24, or a card that's 7.5 inches. But for this project, I'm just gonna choose custom dimensions at the top of that list. So once I click on custom dimensions, now I want to change pixels to inches right there. And then I'm just going to type in eight for the width and 10 inches for the height and then click create new design. Now we have a brand new canvas ready to start creating. If you'd like, you can add a name to your design up in the top corner there. Just click where it had untitled and then I'm just going to title mine, do what you love. And that's the type of quote that I'm going to be using today. So that will change your title. Now let's start adding some text. You could click on text in the left hand sidebar and then choose either add a heading or add a subheading or even add a little bit of body text to create a text box. But I'm going to show you a shortcut that will change your life. Just tap the T key on your keyboard and a text box is created in one click. It's amazing. Now, just type your quote and at this point don't worry about the size, the font or the spacing because we're going to change all of that later. 
Now that you have your quote, let's start designing. The first thing to do is to make the text larger, and it's all a matter of experimenting in the beginning. So click the font size in the top toolbar, and I'm going to scroll down and choose a larger size. I'm going to choose 64, and that's just a starting point. As you'll see, we're going to play with the size of the font as we go through this process. But it allows you to get an idea of what the quote can look like. You can also drag the top or bottom edges of the text box to increase the size as well. Here you can also adjust the size or the width of the text box so it fits on your page, leaving a nice border around all four edges. I just dragged the edges of that text box. And now let's decide if you want your quote centered or right or left aligned. With that text box selected, tap on alignment at the top and it's gonna scroll through various alignments, center, right aligned, left aligned, and decide what looks best for your quote. So I'm gonna leave my quote left aligned. And here I'm going to make a little edit because I realized I typed my quote wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to change it to let's do what you love and do a lot of it. If you want line breaks in your quote, now's the time to go ahead and add them. So as you can see, I'm adding a hard return after the word let's, after the word what. And so I'm adjusting the spacing on those words as well. And it's going to give me a better idea of how I can size my font. And we're going to change that font in the next step here. I'm also going to drag the text box to the center of the page to give me an idea of what it's going to look like when it's complete. Now for more fun by adjusting and changing the font if you'd like and adjusting the spacing. So here's where you get to be really creative and change the fonts if you desire on your design. So make sure that your text box is selected and then let's go ahead and look at some different fonts. You can click in the font box up at the top and then scroll down to see all the various types of fonts that Canva has for you. Now some of them are free in your free account and some you have to have the pro account for. And as you may see, as I'm scrolling, some are custom fonts that I added myself because I have that pro account, but there are plenty of options just with the free account. So here, all I do is I'm clicking on various ones to see what they look like. So I can decide what my final design will be. You can also type in things like typewriter at the top and it's going to give you typewriter fonts. I'm typing in script and I can see the various script fonts. Again, just click on them, knowing that you're going to have to adjust the spacing, you're going to have to adjust the sizing, but you can get a look at what your quote is going to be with various different fonts. For this example, I'm just going to go back to Sans Source Pro Try saying that three times fast. That is a tongue twister because I just kind of like the simplicity of it. And so now let's move further on with our design process. If you need to adjust the spacing between the letters of your words or between the lines, now's the time to do so using the spacing tool up in the toolbar. So you can adjust the space between letters. Generally, that's okay. You can leave that alone, but the line height often needs adjusting. So just slide the button to the right or the left until you're happy with the vertical spacing between lines. Because I like the way it looked with my Sans Source Pro, I'm just going to click the undo arrow in the upper left hand side and return it to its original spacing. Next, add a shadow or other text special effects in Canva. You can easily add a shadow or various other special effects to your text by clicking the text box and selecting effects in the top toolbar. And you can just experiment to see what looks best for your particular design. As you can see, I'm clicking on some of the different options that there are, hollow or splice or echo, and you can decide what looks best or maybe you just want a minimalist typewritten look for your print. In this example, I'm going to add a shadow. And as you can see, you can adjust the offset, the direction, the transparency, and the color. It defaults to black. So I'm going to click on the black and I'm just showing you how you could add different colors. So I have some color palettes already set up and it will change the color of your shadow. But what I'm going to do is to actually change this to white. And you're going to see why in a minute when I add the highlighting in our little design. 
And depending on what type of a look you're going for, you can change the color of one word or one line or even of all the text in your document. As you're seeing here, I'm just clicking on the word love and changing the color of that to a pink, but it's your design and you get to decide what looks best for you. But just know that there's lots of options with the text special effects and with your creative use of color. Now I'm going to show you how to add highlighted text if that's a look that you're going for. It's a really popular look right now, so I'm going to show you how simple that is with Canva. So first what you want to do is to click on elements and then shape. We're going to go for the square, which actually allows you to adjust all different sizes of that image. So I'm going to place it on top of that first word and just adjust it to a size that looks really good. I'm going for a look where it's going to be about halfway through the text and then drop down just a little bit below. You don't need to worry about the color and all that yet. You just want to get that sizing correct. And now you can click on the color. And again, I have uh, various color palettes here that I could choose to see what looks good, or you can create your own custom color up at the top by clicking on new color. You can adjust that line to the various parts of the color wheel there and move to find a color that works best for your design. I'm just going to go to a green that is in one of my palettes and see what that looks like. Now, because this is going to eventually go behind the word and not in front of it, I still do want to adjust the transparency. As you can see, I'm clicking the transparency icon in the upper toolbar. You can drag the slider to your desired level of transparency and I'm going to use about 50%. Now I'm going to put the highlighted color behind the text, but before I do, I want to duplicate the color blocks and adjust the size for the other lines of text. So with that color box highlighted, I'm going to click the duplicate button for as many lines of text as I have on the screen. Then what I can do is to drag each to the line of text and adjust the width and place the shapes on the canvas. Now, rather than move each of the shapes behind the text, it's easier to bring the text box to the front. So click to select the text box, click on position and to front. Now you can clearly see the white text shadow I added earlier. If you want to experiment with different color highlight or different fonts or other edits to your design, I recommend duplicating the page before you do it. That way you always have the original design and you may find that you like another style better, but you can always go back to your original. So don't be afraid to duplicate pages as much as you want. In this example, I'm just trying out to see what it would look like with different color highlight for each line. Again, I'm changing the colors and then I'm going to add the text box to the front and I'll duplicate the page again because I'm going to play around with a different font and see how that looks. As you can see, the design process can be fun and you get to get your hands dirty, so to speak, when experimenting in Canva just to find a look that you really like. I was messing around with the fonts and the size and I decided to eliminate the colorful boxes altogether. But I want to show you something else, another way that you can embellish your design and that's by adding elements. You can click on the elements in the left hand sidebar and then search for something like a flower and see if that adds something to your design or not. I'm just like throwing this on there. I, I will admit that's not great design right there, but just to show you that you can truly make this design your own. I can search for a heart and add some hearts to the design whatever you feel like. And I'm going to show you in a minute how you can add a nice background to your design as well. 
You can add some interest to your design, adding an element like the florals here as a background. You can also drag and drop one of Canva's backgrounds onto your palette. So here I selected an image and I'm just gonna drag it onto the canvas and it puts it in the background. So again, you wanna play with transparency, you wanna play with different colors, just to see how your design is going to look. With this image that I chose, I did change the transparency to make the background a little bit more subtle. But another thing you may want to look at when you're designing your printable wall art is does the font that you chose look good with the background that you chose? So in some of these instances, I may want to play around with the font and choose something a little bit more bold. Here I'm showing you how to add a background using a photo. So Canva has a ton of photos in their library and you can easily drag them onto your screen and then again, experiment with transparency. Here's an instance where I added a little touch of color using one of the elements. I just dragged over the flowers and then I have my printable wall art quotes, beautiful life in one of the matching colors. And I just flipped it to, um, make it like a mirrored image on the bottom. And then I'm gonna add a shadow to my quotes and change it again to one of the colors in the image. The cool thing about Canva is many of the elements, like the florals that you're seeing here, you can adjust the colors. So I could choose a color from a color palette. I could just choose a color that I like to make it match some of my decor. So you really have tons of options when you're designing in Canva. Once you've decided on the final version of your printable wall art, it's time to download it. So click the download button in the upper right corner and you can see that there are various ways you can download. PNG, JPG, PDF. I like to use a PNG image. So just click on that and now you can see I have three pages in this document. I could download them all and they will download as a zip file. I can unzip that file or I'm just going to download one for this example. Click on that and then it can save to your computer wherever you desire. The next step is to print your beautiful documents. Now that your word art is saved, it's time to print your beautiful design. You can print on a home printer, send it to an office supply store like Office Depot or Staples, or have a print made at Michaels, CVS, Walgreens, Costco, or many other local shops with photo departments. Shutterfly is an online printing service and there are many others. I almost always use CVS for printing a design I want to frame because they often have 40% off coupon codes. I recommend printing on cardstock or photo paper if you're framing your design. Another option is to print directly to canvas, a bamboo panel or acrylic panel. CVS, Walgreens, Shutterfly, and most photo services offer these types of printing as well. Now once printed, pop your design into a frame and display it on a wall or a desktop. Another fun display idea is using simple magnetic frames or photo sleeves to add your art onto a refrigerator. You can do a Google search or search on Pinterest for how to display print without a frame for lots of clever ideas. And the cool thing is you can repeat this whenever you want fun new wall art. I hope you found this video helpful and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Happy designing!